So today we got off to a little bit of a later start. We showed up there at 8, started going over the uh, pre-trip stuff, but the vehicle we've been looking at for the pre-trip and been going through uh, for the past couple of days, that is a totally different type of truck than the one that we're going to be testing on. So today they took us to the Peterbilt we're going to be testing on. And I tell you, the inside of that, in uh, the the under the hood is totally different. So I had already kind of remembered in my mind and made associations between everything from the coolant reservoir to the air pump to the, you know, or the water pump to everything basically. So, you know, when it came down to it today and I'm looking at this Peterbilt, I'm like, and my brain just fizzled up. I mean, it granted it was just, it was by no means like the final exam or anything like that. After all, today was only day four in the yard, but it was still one of those things where I looked at things. I'm like, you know, just can't seem to get it. And, and I kept saying some words, but then I was goofing up some things like there was a, 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 a thing of metal. You're supposed to say it's not bent, cracked or broken. And instead, I said it's not um, uh, chipped, cracked, or broken, which is what you say to plastic stuff, not to metal things. And uh, he said, it's what? And, and like, <laughs> oh, what was it that I said wasn't leaking? I said, <laughs> I said something like, um, uh, oh, what was it, a Pittman arm or something like that? I said, no, uh, no leaks. <laughs> and and the, I said, yeah, there wouldn't be any leaks on a Pittman arm. I'm like, yeah, I forget. It was in the Pittman arm. It was something else, but it was really funny though. I was just like, yeah. I mean, after after I was just trying to make an association between, I was like looking at the the one side of the truck, and I'm like, this doesn't have everything the other side does, and it has other things that I don't know what in the world this thing is. So I started to go around, and he kind of he just kind of stood there, and so I went back there and kind of looked, and he just kind of looked back at me as if he was expecting me to say more. So I like looked back at the truck, and I'm like, what a miss, and. uh <laughs> he was like, and he he starts to kind of slowly point, and I I I, I kind of looked at the same time, and I'm like, is that the alternator? And he and he just kind of does this number. I'm like, oh okay, just it looked different on, on the other truck. Tri so there is a definite difference, and so I I took a couple of pictures, or, or I didn't. He the, the instructor Jason that was with us again today, he he says, give me your phone. And you know they have a no cell phone policy on the on the um, on the uh, yard. So so when he said that, I was just kind of like, "What?" And he says, "Activate the camera." I'm like, "Oh, okay." So I gave him the camera and uh, gave him the phone and camera mode. And he takes a picture on the one side, takes a picture on the other, and says, "Study this." And he said that after I was done, because there was quite a few things that I goofed up. There was a lot of things that got right. He said the main thing is um, that that was my problem was the the wording of things. He says, identifying different things and then wording it, um, you know, just because I goofed up some things. But um, I'm pretty confident that if I did the pre-trip on the other truck, I would have gotten it. Uh, there is, I don't want to say like a percentage, but if I were to put a percentage on it, I'd say I probably know 80% of the things um, on the entire like multi-page document, which is you know, front and back, this, this whole thing is just like full of information and document and stuff. Granted, a lot of it is repeating. A lot of it is like, once you learn the different type of material, it's you, you, you say that metals, for example, aren't bent, cracked or broken. You say plastics aren't chipped, cracked or broken. You say that rubber isn't, uh, there's no abrasions, um, bubbles, cuts or dry rot. Um, on like seals and stuff like that, you say it's not cut, torn, or uh, dry rotted. On you know, uh, and you know, uh, on and, and that's that's basically the way it is. Cut, torn, or frayed is another one that you you would sometimes use. Um, and so you 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 know, it, it, there's there's different wording that you use for different parts, and um, there's acronyms that they have on the wall over there that that help you remember them. So like. When you're looking between the brake lining and the brake drum or the uh, rotor and the uh, brake pad, 
then you would say that there is dog. You'd remember dog, no dirt, oil, or um, um, grease. <laughs> That's it. Uh, just sizzled up here. Um, but anyway, so so there's there's different things you say on the pre trap. But anyway, I, as soon as we done, we, we finished that. Me and the other guy that was in the class today, uh, because we we split up our group into the automatics and the manuals, and there's only with me and um, Frischad, Frischad um, and I are the only two manual transmissions that started this week, with exception of Thomas. Now Thomas didn't show up for the first four hours today for some reason. So he, he had to do his pre-trip with somebody else. So he wasn't with us all day. We were put with two other, no, I was put with one other guy that started yesterday. He's an Amazon employee. Uh, and he, his mom is a truck driver and he's, he, 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 he understands more than he, he claims to. He basically says, you know, Oh, I don't know this stuff. I just stepped a foot in, in, in a truck for the first time yesterday. And that may be true, but he has listened to his mom and he does understand certain principles. It's just getting those down, like a couple of things. He was just like, all right, what am I doing wrong? Because he would line up and then he would start to do something. He's like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Because he just could not make the connection. Um, so today we started with parallel parking. And I only got to do that twice because we 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 changed over at lunchtime, and um, Frashad um, went first, then I went, then Brandon went, and then we rotated back through again, and then Frashad went, and we didn't have time for me before lunch, so I didn't get to do that more than twice, and it was only on the one side. Um, what I will say is that it's funny because they they. They teach you the procedure like textbook, but it's amazing when they do it, it's, it looks so easy. It's like you line up, you turn the wheel and you, 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 uh, turn and, and it's like you turn the wheel away from where you're going to be backing up first. Uh, you know, so if you're going to back up to the left and, and parallel park to your left, um, or, or to your, uh, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna like, for example, we were parallel parking. We we pulled up and and the box was on the right, so we had to turn the the wheel to the left in order to to start to you know move it around. And you watch for about three quarters of the landing gear in the mirror, and as soon as you see that, you turn the wheel hard all the way the other direction, and then you do that until it, the trailer straightens up, and it should put you in a line in a line where you can see uh, about two and a little bit more of of that cone directly back in the back of where you're going to be parallel parking first time i overshot that thing like crazy i i must have gotten not just the the you know two cones in the very back but i saw like four cones up and i'd like turn that thing sideways i'm like what i do what i do so i lined the thing back up and i just could not get it in there for for anything the second time i did it was hilarious because um i started to do it started doing it and it got lined up and then as soon as i went to swing in there i did something and i ended up uh when i pulled the truck back into the box i ended up going right on top of one cone and the other one was perfectly wedged right between my my rear my drive tires and the trailer it was like when i when i swung it in there it was right on the gap so i didn't hit it didn't run it over but it was right there and it was <laughs> It was funny because um, Jason's a good guy. He's the instructor, and and I started joking with him, you know, uh, <laughs> when he was when he was um, he said, you know, if you if you got your straight back and your and your offset, you know, and you don't have any points on that, he said, you 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 can save up your points for this maneuver, and I said, well, if it makes it easier, if I still pass, can I just drive right over the cones and go right in? And he just kind of looks at me, and I said, it's only like what. I could probably do it just by running over two cones and, and that's be like, what, a four point deduction, something like that. I can, I can still pass with that. And he just kind of looks at me, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, there's, it just, we, we were all, you know, we're all cutting up on each other. And he's like, you know, you know, after, after lunch, we moved over to the, um, uh, alley dock. So the right angle back. And I tell you, I was his guinea pig. So he was like, all right, so do this and do this and do this. And I tell you, he can, 
his depth perception isn't great. So when he sits over in uh, with with the people that are waiting underneath the table, he will, he'll say, "All right, cut it, cut it, cut it." And then like I'm like five feet too shallow, and then he, he's like, "No, you cut too too late, or you cut too early, or something like that." Or, and you know, uh, and and I, I was having problems doing it over and over again. But then he stands up, comes over, and then he gives you exactly what you need to do because he can he can be a remote control to you when you're right there. But his depth perception is a little bit off, so um, he'll tell you to cut a little bit early or something like that, and then you'll end up next to the box or something like that, or about to run over it. And um, it's funny though because he'll he'll say, "No, not that box, this box," and you know uh, you know because uh, you'll start to go way sideways or something like that. There was one of the guys today who started back up the um, the trailer. And he started to go right back towards this tent where everybody is hanging out when they're waiting for their turn on the next, uh, the next, um, uh, truck over. And, uh, you know, Chase will yell, whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey. And of course the guy stopped, but, uh, you know, but he kept doing this. He kept like going in line with that, just missing the box like crazy. It was really funny. Granted, going slow, but people over there are just hilarious. They're all very supportive, but they also cut up a little bit. So like, as, as soon as, as soon as he starts yelling to, to stop, we were like watching him. He's getting faster and faster. We're like, stop, stop, stop. Finally, he stops and he's like 15 feet away from the edge of the tent. Uh, Jason was about to jump and run over there. And I was like, you know, yelling. Um, and then, then we turn around and we look at the back of the truck and there's like an American flag on the back there. There's this one guy saying the Pledge of Allegiance in, from underneath that tent. It's just like, you know, it's it kind of funny. The delivery of it is just like, you know, the, the you turn around, there's the American flag in your face, like 15 feet away. So he's like saying that. But, um, you know, we were all cutting up and, and uh, laughing and joking. And I, I, I did, I did that one. Let's see. The first time I got all screwed up, I went forward. I got all screwed up. Jason, correct me. This is after he taught me through the first time. He taught me through the first time. And it's like perfect when he talks me through it. I mean, it's, he's like, you know, back up, cut it right, tr cut it a little bit left, cut it right, and it goes right in the box. He's like, now just do your straight back. I'm like, well, you know, I, I almost want him on the test, you know, to kind of be st standing by, you know, doing this number because then, then I'd do really well. But, you know, obviously I need to know this stuff. But um, anyway, so first time I did it by myself, I botched it, kept, kept going in weird angles and stuff like that. He came up and corrected me and got me right in there instantly you know, because he's really good. Uh, the second time, I went over there, I started back up. I realized the, that I was going to be like five feet too short. I was, I was almost centered on the, on the, the cone. So I pulled back forward, backed up, did the exact same thing again, almost right on the cone. So I pulled forward again, went backed up, went straight onto, uh, like facing straight toward the cone again. As I started to pull it back around, it's like, you know, right there on the cone. I'm like, and I did this four times in a row. And finally, Jason stands up and he says, and I'm like, what am I doing? Do I just need to start later? He's like, no, you need to. And he told me how to correct the movement. And so he did. And then I, I started to back up, you know, better. That's not, that time it still didn't stick. The next time I went to do it, I tried it and I, I botched it a little bit and I pulled up and whatever. Anyway, the very last time I did it, by that point, I was like, okay, so the procedure is as soon as you start your turn, you're going to go to like a three o'clock position. You pull it over three o'clock. You start to go back. And as soon as you see the, the foot of the landing gear on this, on the inside tire, you straighten it up and you just wait for the trailer to start pushing it. Uh, you know, you, you can't really see it very well. You can see my hands are actually different colors now because of the sun. Great. Um, anyway, so the, it, it starts to push back. And, and when you, when you first kick it, it starts to go back. And then as you, you just stay straight, it will continue to go more and more and more. It's really funny. You can do it perfectly with your hands. You start to back up and you're like, oh, okay, you start to do this and you can instantly do it exactly the way it needs to go. But with the truck, it's different. So, um, anyway, it's kind of difficult to show camera, but it worked, it worked, uh, surprisingly well for me. Uh, I, I, I backed up and I, I put it right in the box and then, but I couldn't see the cones on the right hand side because, you know, the trailer is, is, it's kind of blind over there and you're not seeing it as you go in. And I was like, I just, I, I second guessed it. So I was like, uh, I'm probably right on like every one of those cones. So at that point I pulled forward and then I tried to straighten it up, but I went the wrong way to try to straighten it up and kick the trailer back the wrong way. 
So as I started to go back, I was, I, I was like, ah, garbage. You know, I, I, I have to fix this. So I, I, I pulled forward again, which is not good and uh, aligned it. So that way I, uh, I actually put the trailer in the right line. And then I went straight back. As soon as I finished, they were like, that was great. You know, why'd you pull forward? You pulled forward twice and both times you were in the box. I'm like, I didn't feel it. They, they told me this was a bit was based on feel. You have to feel it. And I didn't feel it. So it was only when I finally lined up and I saw the cones. I was like, oh yeah, I can straight back to here. No problem. But it's just, um, it was that, uh, I just had, had no confidence in the first two lineups, even though apparently it was right on it. Uh, or, you know, maybe slightly off center, but, um, I have really good depth perception. So as I'm backing up, I can pretty well guess where it's going to be right in the box in the back. It's got to not screw that up. And, and if anything, start to go a little bit more shallow because I can always back up and not go over the box. But if I go back too far, you fail. So. Anyway, it was a good, it was a good day. It was a good week. Um, you know, today, uh, th this week was, um, you know, four days in the, in the, um, out there in the yard. So I have two more full weeks and then one day. It doesn't seem like much, but yet they keep telling me by the end of my third week, I'm going to be so bored and wanting to leave every day. They're saying, they, they say, you'll, you'll have this stuff down. Every single day, it's like, okay, fine, I'll get in the truck. And, and, you know, you'll get tired of doing parallel. You'll get tired of doing offset. You'll be tired of doing straight back. You'll be tired of doing the alley back. And, uh, and it's like, you know, they're, they're just, they're like, oh, you're going to get tired, so tired of doing this stuff over and over again. It's like, man, I just can't imagine that because right now I'm still trying to get all this stuff down. It's like, you know, especially with all the paperwork, the paperwork, I know it's going to flow easier. I know that once you do it and you continue to study, throughout next week, it will get easier. I get that. It's just right now on that path. It's like, it's like pushing a, you know, you push a, you know, a card or something like that up a hill. Once you get to the top, it's easy because you just get to coast down, but it's getting to that point that's going to make you really tired and exhausted and just, you know, so much to do. So. Anyway, it's, it's, I, I really enjoy the school. I think that the people are great. The people make it great. Um, instructors are not afraid to, to get out there and help you. And they, they cut up with you a little bit and they, uh, they're very streamlined in their approach. Every single instructor has, has a little bit of a different approach. Um, like, you know, Mark is extremely, technical on the trucks he's very much a stickler for detail so if you if i get the um if i have to do like a uh the um uh, pre with him um the, the, the if i if i have to do like the end cab or if i have to do the uh pre-trip or anything like that with him if i get like any little word wrong he's not, he's not gonna like it but um you know uh, Jason at the same time, will will cut up a little bit, you know, um, I was, I, I was looking around and trying to find something and there's a couple of guys named Michael and Patrick who this, this was their second to last day. Monday is technically, I think they said that they're testing on Monday, but they should technically be reviewing on Monday, but Michael and Patrick are both really, really good guys. And, uh, Michael's really country and Patrick's just kind of laid back and, and, um, they both have really good sense of humor, but anyway, so we were, as I was going through my pre-trip, um, on, on section a, I was trying to remember. And I looked, I looked at the, um, the oil cap and, uh, uh, and the dipstick and I could not, I, I looked at him. I'm like the oil reservoir. And, you know, cause at that point I was so frazzled. I said the oil reservoir and Jason says the what? And I kind of turn and look at him. And I point back over the dipstick and I kind of, I, I look at the, the two, I look at him and I point back and forth because at this point I'm waiting to see what he's saying. Cause I didn't realize that I had said reservoir and he does this number. He touches his hat and I said, Oh, oil cap. And, and then he points at Patrick and, uh, and, and you know, I just kind of look at him puzzled and he says dipstick. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> so of course now it's made, it made the association. So Patrick just kind of shakes his head like this. So the next time when Frechette, um, uh went and did his, 
you know, he was walking through section section A. He he was I was I was to his back, and as as he as he as he's going around looking for the next thing, he rests on top of the the oil cap. He looks at that, and he says oil cap, and then he he takes the the pointer over to the dipstick, but then he he goes instantly away, and instantly I point over at Patrick, and he didn't even look at me. He just instantly raised his middle finger to me, and it's just like it's it's funny because you know all cutting up, but at the same time, you know there's there's obvious appreciation there for for knowledge and skills and he, he he and michael have both been very big help to me i mean they're the ones this morning who when i arrived early i went right over to a truck and um it was building up air pressure and uh in the um um the air air tank uh and i was uh I was standing by there trying to figure out the differences on the Peterbilt versus the the other truck that we had been on. And Patrick and Michael came by there and they go, well, this is this and this is this and this is this. And what you got to say is this. And you all want And Patrick actually helped me today by, by adding a couple of extra things that he said, you should add this. It doesn't say it in the paperwork, but you should add it because they're going to be looking for it. I was like, oh, good to know. Um, so they're, they're good. They're, there's a good amount of knowledge there. And um, one thing that's really good about these instructors too is that they talk to the people at DNV at the DDS that actually do the tests. And like yesterday, for example, the guy that does the test over in Gainesville, he came by the school to, to check out the yard. And, uh, some of the guys talked to him and, uh, found, and they, he looked over the paperwork and said what he would expect them to add or, or what would, you know, what he wanted to make sure he heard that kind of thing, giving him information. That's good. You know, they, they have stuff to study, things like that. That's good. So, so yeah, four days in. Man, 10 days left. Doesn't seem like much. Well, 11 days. Doesn't seem like much though. Got a lot to cram in there. But then granted, I've only been, I mean, I've been in the yard for four days. The first day I didn't really get any instruction. I was just kind of thrown in. Second day, it was all in cab. Or I'm sorry, not all in cab. It was all pre trip. It was like the whole day was pre trip. And then yesterday and today, it was, you know, three or four hours, three to three and a half hours in the morning and afternoon, both days, doing the four main techniques. So you have straight back, you have um, offset, you have parallel parking, and then you have alley back. So, and of those times, I only got a few, a handful of times. The, the straight back, after the couple, first couple of times, I got that down. I, I feel confident with that. I'm, I'm able to, if I start to go slightly off, I'm able to pull that one back around. Um, granted, the Peterbilt's a little bit different than the other truck too, but still, you know, it was this, this, the, the, the other truck, I could see more this side of the trailer. The Peterbilt, I can't see nearly as much of it. So, uh, it just means that, that, as opposed to seeing more of the trailer on the side, I have to see, I see a little bit less of it, which is not a problem as soon as I adjust. So anyway, it's good. Looking forward to it and getting more practice next week. That's going to be the big thing. And uh, got to study for it. So there you go. There's another, another day down. Thanks for watching.